welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Seppi and this is my sister Sol. Hola! We haven't done a sit down video together in like definitely over a year, but I'm really excited to do this and I'm really glad to have a chit chat and deep talk with Sol just about life, what's been going on with us and how our mentalities might have changed since we last had a sit down together and just shared some wisdom and advice with you guys. Uh, what do you think, Sol? I love that idea. I'm it, excited for this. I know. I think we haven't done one of these in ages. Also, guys, side note, look at my teeth. Sol did Invisalign and so far we've gone two shades lighter with my teeth. I'm obsessed. Any of you guys want to see my before and after, head over to the Dr. S Dentistry Instagram to see. Let me see. Oh, they're beautiful. But I really, if you want to see, just go to any of my videos from 2021 or earlier and you'll see how different my smile was. And I just love how it looks. So thanks. Oh, so absolute pleasure. Um, one of those where like you can't stop smiling because you really like it. We're still going to do some bonding, I think, for a few of the teeth. Um, but if we do, we'll share that on the journey too. Yeah. So make sure you follow. I think you need to just leave it as is for at least a couple of weeks and then see if what you feel afterwards. Because as much as I love bonding, I think this looks beautiful. Yeah, I think you've done a great job. <laughs> so we're going to start off with some questions, some of which you guys had sent in to me previously, some of which I've come up with, which I think are a bit deep and that I would want to know from myself, my point of view now, and I want to know your point of view now on it. The first one is, let's talk about love. love. I love love. I love, love people in love. Coming up to Valentine's Day. So, speaking of, do you have a date on Valentine's Day? No. Why are you lying? I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm doing my masters in Liverpool <laughs> and I'm going to Liverpool on my own. So, would you have had a date on Valentine's Day if you weren't going to Liverpool? Yes. <laughs> I don't have a date on Valentine's Day. Oh. <laughs> well, that, I want to have your date for no, Valentine's you know Day. She really steals my thunder because I was going to be there like, yeah, no, I don't have a date on Valentine's And then she goes, no, I don't have one. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, I don't have a date on Valentine's Day, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have had in the past weekend alone, like people message me like out of the woodwork. Like, hey, do you want to go out tonight? What are you doing? Oh. Blah, blah, blah. So I feel like guys sense Valentine's Day as much as girls and maybe don't want to be single on Valentine's Day, which I think, I was speaking about this with some girls yesterday. Sorry, not single on their own on Valentine's maybe, Day. Maybe, maybe. But I was speaking about it with some, some girls yesterday and um, some of them were single and some of them were in relationships and the one, one of the girls who was in a relationship was saying, I really don't care about Valentine's Day and then um, the other girls were like, it's because you have a boyfriend that you don't think it's a big deal, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, no, even before that, I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, so do you think it's a big deal? Yeah, I think it is. I think when you don't have oxygen, you only miss oxygen when you don't have oxygen. Does that make sense? So you think having someone is like having oxygen? Maybe the wrong analogy. I was going to say you really put your foot in it with that one, didn't you? <laughs> Maybe the wrong analogy. But I feel like you don't... You want it more when you don't have it. And it's not so much you want it more. There's been so many times where I have been so comfortable with being single and I find that other people have a problem with it. I'd have colleagues, patients asking me about my dating life and I am happy with being single, you know. I was happy with being single. It's other people that don't have an... They're not happy with it and have an issue with it. Yeah. And it's the same for Valentine's Day. I was happy, last Valentine's Day, I was happy, like, I was really looking forward to coming home, sitting down on the sofa with the dog and a takeaway and watching some nonsense on TV or some old episodes of Friends. My parents had a reservation, like, outside and they were like, no, 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 you have to come with us. I was like, no. They missed their reservation and took me to a local restaurant just so I could go with them. So I'm not on my own on Valentine's Day. It was lovely. However... You would have liked to be by yourself. Yes! <laughs> I really would have, you know, instead of taking pictures of them. Watching um, them go... Oh. <laughs> so... I feel like 
Valentine's Day. I'm the kind of person I, I love. I'm very romantic. I love love. I love when, um, in, when I am in a relationship, I'd love to celebrate Valentine's Day. But I do think Valentine's Day might be seen as less important when you're in a relationship like that's kind of new. But let's say if you're married and a few years have passed and you hear like all these couples, like there's some podcasts about it, etc., where they lose the spark, they forget to like surprise their partner, they forget to do anything romantic. And I feel like that's what Valentine's Day is really, really good for in terms of love. Like it's good to remind you to show some love and affection and show that you've thought of someone. I get that like it might be a cue for loads of brands and shops etc like to use it as marketing to get you to spend money and I feel like as a romantic person myself I don't necessarily get the biggest joy on Valentine's Day from going and sitting in a restaurant where all the tables are two people, two people, two people. I actually, that, that cringes me out a lot. But I think it's more in like the flowers, the thoughts, the texts in the morning, like happy Valentine's Day and just that kind of stuff is more... I like the cards. The cards. I just really like the cards. Is Valentine's Day a commercial exploitation of love? Yes. <laughs> but does it matter? No. <laughs> Any excuse to celebrate love is a good enough excuse. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Do you believe in soulmates? I don't know. I really don't know. Soulmates of the opposite sex or someone that you're physically attracted to? Or could it be that you're my soulmate? No, I mean like a partner in life soulmate. Like one forever? Yeah. I don't know, sir. Have you met anyone and you're like, this is my soulmate? Because I feel like what I've understood soulmates to be is someone who, from the get-go, you knew they were your soulmate. Like, love at first sight. Love at that... first sight, almost, but like, you just, you sat with them, you spoke with them and you clicked and you're like, you're my lobster. That's very cute. Do yeah. I believe in that? Yeah. I believe that there's something better than what I imagine there to be. I'm not sure I understand that. There, yes, I'd want someone that's perfect for me and oh my God, that's lovely. But what if that someone is ticks boxes that aren't really there? Does that make sense? Like they're better than what you envisioned them yeah, to be. Definitely. They're just, you know, they open your eyes, their way of thinking is completely different to yours and they just compliment you. Like I don't want to date a copy of myself. Yeah. And it's so nice to have like, Someone who teaches you new things, yes. shows you a whole new world. Yeah, so I used to say that I'd love to see the uh, in the world in four eyes. And how nice is that when someone's outlook on life is completely different to yours? Yeah. It's beautiful. I think that's one of the reasons why me personally, I'm, I'm a doctor. I've never dated a oh, doctor. I'm a doctor. It's just my job, what do you want me to say? <laughs> but I've never dated a doctor and I feel like one of the reasons people always ask me, they're like, how come you've never like gone out with a with a doctor? Like you never ever give them a chance when, when they show you Have interest. you never gone on a date with a doctor? No, never. Never. Like, not even one date? No. Have you ever fancied anyone like a doctor? No, if it like as in not a realistic one, like for example, oh, I said you're gonna marry a doctor. <laughs> I don't believe that. Firstly, I don't believe that because I believe in the same thing as as you, in that I want to see, like I want to hear about different experiences. Like it's I personally, and again, this is probably a weird thing to say, but I don't really like dating at all. Like I just I'm I I'm not a fan of it. Like I feel like I know from the start when I meet like someone if I'm going to get along with them and if it's going to progress to something um, and when your friends kind of like force you like oh give this, give this guy a chance like you should go out on a date with him I can usually tell already in my brain's vetting process if this is going to work or not so I just don't like going on dates for like the sake of going on dates like no, I, do you mean a second date or a third date no even date? a first date because with me I've never dated like online so everyone who I've been on a date with anyone who I've ever been on a date with I've met first or been introduced to first and then gone on a date with them okay so yeah that's why I feel like in general I don't really like dating because I will usually know before even the date just speaking to someone a bit if I will like them or not and sometimes I just I feel like I prefer being which isn't I don't think it's the best way by the way but like sometimes when you're in like a certain mindset you have some goals you're like I really don't want to then spend this evening with this person who I feel like 
even though I give you a chance and yeah, there might be something, but I know in my brain that you're not the one. So You've like, already made up your mind. Yeah, I feel like I don't, sometimes I just, I don't even bother because I'm like, there's no point. And when I do bother, my friend's like, see, you should give this person a chance. And I'm like, see, I didn't like them, <laughs> you know? So I feel like I really went off cue with what, what we were talking about. What was about. the question? I really can't remember. I feel like we were talking about soulmates. Yeah. And we, talk, we were talking about dating doctors. But yeah, like the same with doctors. Like I feel like when I've been on dates where I've been really fascinated by the other person, they never ever like do anything that I know anything about because then I ask them about their work and I find it so intriguing. And especially if like someone's an entrepreneur, I find it really, really cool that someone has their own drive. Like I have a job where... If I don't show up, there is a bunch of people waiting for me. There's a bunch of people dependent on me. Whereas when you're an entrepreneur, you need to show up for yourself first. So I find that really cool. Like when you when you date someone to like, and they're an entrepreneur or something, it gives you like that different mindset. So yeah. I, I want like, someone to look at me the way I look at you. I want someone to look at me the way you look at me too. <laughs> but maybe in... <laughs> Less not, creepy. Yeah, not in a sibling way actually. So <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't want that. <laughs> But do I believe in soulmates? I feel like, no. I feel like you, you sit with someone and after a while of letting your walls down naturally because I think everyone to some extent will always have some sort of guard or walls and, and once you allow that to come down and you allow yourself to converse with the person, you can then see what they're really about and if you click and then that's what matters. I don't think I'd ever, I've ever looked at someone and been like, oh, you, you're mine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you agree with that? No, 100%. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's what we think about soulmates. Mm -hmm. Soulmates. <laughs> How can you tell if someone's the one for you? Oh. Um, they let me eat their chicken wings. They let me drink their wine. <laughs> Just the casual stuff. You know, and... I can speak to them freely without being judged, you know, I start conversing. I don't usually speak my mind, I'm, I hold back quite a bit and when I start speaking that's when I know I'm comfortable with someone. Yeah. And, and then also when they make an effort with my family, I really love that. I love that when people when one particular family. But that's quite far down the line, isn't it? Like I don't think No, I like people to meet my family quite quickly. Because if you're not going to get along then One of my best friends is like that. She um her ex partner, um, she introduced him after like three weeks of them being together because she wanted to know if like her mum and her dad liked him. Um, and then she could still date him. And they went yeah. out for like five, six years, yeah. so. And also, they're all I think about, and everything else in life is just noise until the next time I see them. Oh. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. I feel like you know if someone's the one for you if you feel most comfortable in yourself around them, and you're calm. I read this thing, and I realized it's so true. Like, in my life, if I've ever, dated someone and they've been right for me especially since I've been an adult not like when when you're younger I only started dating when I was like 18 19 so when you're like at that age I feel like you still have your own insecurities and things but when you get a bit older and you you know who you are a bit more and you're more comfortable in yourself um when you meet someone else and you can stay that same level of relaxed and calm with them but also find them really attractive I think that's when you know they're the one for you. Don't you find that they become more attractive? Of course, of like, course. Definitely. You, know, you, you, look remind... back, you look back at like someone you dated and you're like, oh, like what was I thinking? Like you're so not like as cute as I thought you were or something. And then you remember like all the things they did to make you feel excited and bubbly. And then you're like, oh yeah, okay, now I get it. <laughs> um, but I think that's how you know they're the one. And also like, I feel like it's a safety thing. Like I always want someone who makes me feel safe as well, and um, safe, secure. You know, in your heart of heart, when you start getting little anxieties about them, that's it. My dad says something which is rather beautiful, 
and it's that no one can fool us like we can fool ourselves that's very true so you know when someone's toxic you know when you see those red flags you don't need a friend or a sibling or anyone to tell you you've already seen it trust yourself so the, i feel like there's two types of tox toxic i feel like there's the overtly obvious toxic the one who is horrible to you rude to you puts you down and just makes you feel like crap that's the first kind of negativity and toxic energy and then i feel like the second kind of toxic is the more dangerous one because it's the person who seems so lovely and it's like the devil in disguise they'll make you feel like they're a lovely person that you can trust that are really nice but will just make you feel insecure about little things so they'll tell you that they love you and then they care about you etc but for example they might be like oh but I'm not sure that I can be with you because I just don't think, you know, my family would think you're good enough for me. That's toxic because that's someone saying, I, I think you're good enough for me. But, but they don't. But they, I think they won't, they won't see no. you as good enough for me. So that's... I like, love you regardless of that. Yeah. You're not perfect and they will see that you're not perfect, but I will stand by you yeah. regardless of that. Like, I feel like that's an example. Fortunately, I've not dated someone like that, but I, I hear it through my friends. I'm like please see this for yourself because I like Sol said I feel like you can't no one can fool you only you can fool no. yourself so you can't wake up someone who's pretending to sleep I think that's definitely one of the the other toxic people that you need to kind of keep be aware of and keep in mind in your life and make sure that you don't give them too much of your energy if there was one thing and I guess this is another question for you to think about if there was one thing that you can go back and tell yourself from when you were like 20 years old um, or 19 years old. You don't even need to finish that. Uh, put yourself first. Don't give up on yourself in terms of don't put the time that you, don't sacrifice the time that you have for yourself or someone else, be it anyone else in your life. If you want to go to the gym, still make time to go to the gym. If you want to go out with your friends, still make time to go out with your friends. I'll give you guys an example as well of one of one of my friends. Um, we were going out to dinner. We told her, come to dinner with us, we're going out to dinner, etc. We'd said it from the week before and yeah. she hadn't responded yet. So comes the day of the dinner, we're like, are you going to come to dinner with us? And she was like, oh, I'm going to see if my boyfriend um, goes to football, then yeah, I'll come. But if he decides not to go to football, then I'm just going to go and chill at his house. So, so I think that's really pathetic. So I feel like that's an example of a time where you are not prioritizing yourself and you're putting someone else ahead of you. So as soon as you start disrespecting, I found that as soon as I started disrespecting myself, it made it very easy for other people to start disrespecting me and then I began to become resentful because they were disrespecting me. So now I like to respect myself, I like to keep time for my family, my friends, my leisure activities. Yeah, I think that's so true. I think if there's one thing that I could tell my younger self, it would probably be to know my worth. I think a lot of times I used to think that if I didn't give the answer that the other person wanted to hear, and this could even uh, go towards friendships as well and any sort of relationship, not just um, with a partner, but I used to think that if I didn't give the answer that the other person wanted to hear, that it would jeopardize my relationship with that person or make me, them feel bad and I would care more about how they felt than I would care about how I felt. Um, so it was your inner chimp trying to make them happy. Chimp paradox, guys. If you guys haven't read it, neither have I. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> I listened to it. He's on. got a new book out actually. In the jungle. In the jungle. So I'm gonna read the chimp paradox. We love the diary of a CEO by Stephen. Oh, we just love Stephen. I think that's one of my goals in life. I want to make it onto wait, diary wait, wait, of a CEO. Back. No, we love Stephen so much. He's so good. I love his podcast. I think loads of people have discovered him even more in the past year. Yeah. Right. Makes it even better because when you talk about him and his podcast, people know what you're on about, and they're under the same spell. What do you think is a good age to start dating it's up to you whatever what's right for me is completely different for what's right for seppi we all reach um emotional maturity at a different age so you have to be a little emotionally mature i guess 
I think if you don't want someone to take advantage of you, then you definitely need to be mature for sure. Because if you, and we all naturally do it, if we are all just going on the date with someone because we like them, but we don't know what we expect of it, we don't know what we want from it, we don't know anything, then someone else can sway us. So you have to know in your head, even if it's nothing that you want, you have to know I don't want anything. So that no one else can sway you to what they want, if that makes sense. That's very true. It shouldn't be going to expectations. It shouldn't be what you expect from the other person. It's what you expect for yourself. Does that make sense? Because you cannot predict how the other person will react. And if they don't meet those expectations that you have, they'll make you really unhappy. However, if you have no expectations from them, but you have certain standards that they need to meet, it's very different. Set I standards really agree with for that. yourself. I like, really this agree. is what I would like. Mm. I'd like to be treated with respect. Mm -hmm. I'd like to I'd like a phone call. I'd like I don't know, you want them to open the door for you. Like whatever those are. And it should be what you want, not what you expect from them. Does that make sense? I really, really think that the times in life that you've been like really hurt or heartbroken or let down by someone is when you created them to be someone else in your head that they're not and that's why you've technically let yourself down not the other person letting you down you start dating someone for example and you let's say you're a guy and you think that the girl that you're dating is super chill she doesn't care about if you have loads of girl mates, she doesn't care if you want to go out to the pub all the time with your friends. She doesn't care about any of those things. She's super laid back. She's happy to see you three times a week because you like three times a week and you want it to fit into your schedule. And then she turns out to be someone who is not chill with you going out with your friends, wants more date nights um, rather than you going to the pub with your mates, only wants to see you twice a week, not three times a week. And then you're left there being like, ugh, this girl is so like not what I thought she was going to be and it's it's pretty much that it's because you've created something in your head rather than just letting someone be who they are and then seeing if that fits in with what you want a hundred percent and I really agree with what Saul said of just because you're uh, like not setting up this false idea in your head of what that person is doesn't mean that you shouldn't have expectations for yourself and you can voice if those expectations aren't met um, don't be scared to voice them because the longer you're silent the more it will go on and the more upset you will be the other person doesn't know if we don't communicate with them they're not gonna know yeah i agree with Zoll for sure and then let's say you meet someone who is quite toxic how would you advise someone to get out of toxic relationships because I know friends who've been in toxic relationships who've needed like the help of a therapist to get out of that first. They are too scared to tell family and friends because that's a lot of the case. Like we're we're from Iran and we totally understand like every culture has its own mentality towards dating and like you need to be like mindful and respectful of that too. So maybe everyone can't go and tell their parents or their siblings that they are seeing someone. Um, and then if that person is quite toxic for them they don't know how to end it and they don't have that support so what do you think you have to want to stop dating them you have to want to be out of that relationship and you have to want to want better for yourself no one else can do it but you you have to want that yeah seppi could want me to stop dating x or my parents could but i'd have to want to ultimately the decision lies with me I have to see that they're toxic and then I have to do it. And then I have to decide, do I want to do it on my own or do I want to do it with their help? Can I do it on my own? Whose help? The help of your friends and your family. Can I do it on my own or would it work better if I had their help? I think getting out of a toxic relationship can be so difficult because that person has a different kind of hold on you because they've played a different mental game with you so to speak and that just makes it so much harder and if you don't have friends or family to support you in in breaking up with them it can be difficult i would say the first thing i would do is work on my own self-esteem right 
if you live with this person I guess it can be harder so the other thing I would plan on doing is separating my finances so that I could afford to move out if I need to right no one's saying that like if you're in a scenario that you need to run away from it instantly unless you obviously fear something then obviously leave that scenario straight away but if it's just a case of someone not wanting good for you in general and making you feel overall lesser than you are or not getting what you deserve then I think you need to plan an exit strategy whether that be moving out by yourself if you live with them um, having your own income if you rely on them for financial income that could be really difficult so maybe getting a part-time job or a full-time job or a remote job and all of those things I think you need to plan those things so that when you have the when you've plucked up the courage to say to them that you don't want to be with them anymore you don't need to linger around to have them drag you back in like you could be like hey really appreciate our time together but I don't think we work together because of x and I want x and you want y you want z and I want b you're it talking apples, I'm talking pears. It doesn't work and don't give that person an opportunity to talk you out of it, I think. Because if you sit around and wait for that opportunity, then you're going to be fooled and then you're going to be back into that cycle and you don't want that cycle. I feel like that is everything we're going to talk about. Can we end it on a happy note? Okay, end it on a happy note. Tell me your favourite quote. This too shall pass. This too shall pass is a really good one. Before we end this video, we just want to draw your attention to what's going on in Iran. If none of you guys are aware of what's happening in Iran, there is a huge movement towards women's rights and freedom and general human rights for the people in Iran. This all started since the death of Masa Amini in September 2022. The people in Iran have been protesting in the streets in Iran and outside of Iran, the Persian population has been supporting them. This is a community of Persians from all over, the Kurdish, the Turkish Iranians, the Azerbaijani Iranians. All of the Persians have come together to stand up for the people of Iran to be broken free from the dictatorship that is happening. As a result of this, many people who, part who participated in peaceful protests are now being identified using security cameras in the streets and being called to prosecution and um, being sentenced to death penalty without many of them without a fair trial and many of them forced and beaten into giving false confessions. It's been really, really, really difficult for us as Iranians from outside to watch just it. watch it and try and help and spread the message where we can. Um, we've got some links down below in the description for anyone who feels like they can share the message, get involved, sign petitions and try and get the whole world talking about this. Guys, we'd really appreciate it if you could share and you could post about the movement in Iran. Every single post helps. It really Please does. Raise awareness. It's linked down in the description if you guys want to read more about what has triggered all of this what it is we're speaking about, you can have a read. Thank you guys so much. On a positive note, we wish you all a happy Valentine's Day in advance. We do, we love you. <laughs> we really do. We do, I love you. I love you too. And we'll see you next time. Bye.